Halstead Telephone Company and r and Broadcasting Incorporated is proud to present to you this broadcast on yourliveevent.com. Welcome in to the Your Live Event Robotics Show presented by Enbridge. Of course, thank you for joining us here on your Saturday morning. We'll be joining you every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. where we will go through the world of robotics and talk to some of the coaches, talk to some of the players and uh, participants and, you know, break down what is going on in the world of robotics, especially the new game coming with the new game coming this past weekend. We'll go ahead and break down it all for you. So let's talk with some of these competitors and get in, get a deeper dive into the world of robotics with some of the, with some of the participants as well. But up first today, we're going to be joined by Olaf of the Techno Tigers team 3102. Olaf and Jake, take it away. We welcome in the mentor of the uh, Nevis Techno Tigers, uh, Team 3102, Olaf Netterberg, with us uh, to, to talk about what's coming up in robotics. There's a lot of the big news coming out this week with the uh, the, the game being announced uh, here just a few days ago. So uh, I, I guess right now, just with the team, what's the excitement level like? Uh, what do they think of the, the big announcement? Everyone's just uh, just twittering. I mean, they're just vibrating with excitement. Um, they just can't wait to let's you know let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And every time the game comes out, you know, as mentors, our first step is, well, do you fully understand the 144 page rule book? Because until we understand the rules and analyze strategy and potential ways to score points and you know what are bonus points and what are not bonus points and you know, if I do this, this, and this, I have a multiplier of points. And, you know, we've got to understand the game before we start designing and building. And again, as mentors, our, one of our toughest jobs right now is just holding them back. Like, you know, sure, that's a great idea. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, and I'd imagine they're, they're raring to go and rightfully so. But uh, what does the timeline look like as far as this build season to – to understand what you need to do, figure out what you want to do, and then go ahead and do it. You know, so this year's game, um, essentially, we have to manipulate a small road cone, um, about a, you know, shin high road cone. So visualize a volleyball court that has um, road cones on the opposite side. And your robot has to drive across that court as fast as it can pick up a road cone, bring it back, and then stack it uh, basically like on a three row set of bleachers. And where every, every place that there's a seat, there's either a peg for that road cone to sit on. Um, and of course the bottom row is easy. The second row is harder, the third row is the hardest. So you get more points if you can reach out and put this road cone on this peg, you know, then the peg is about waist high and your robot can only get within about three feet of it. So you've got to reach out precisely, dangling this road cone in your, me your mechanism and drop it on that peg and then turn around, race down the floor, get another one, come back and do it again and see how many times you can do that in two minutes and 15 seconds. And then to add more excitement, there is a four foot by eight foot, let's call it a teeter totter. And it hinges not long ways like a playground teeter-totter, but the other ways. So the center of it is, uh, you know, the pivot is long. It's eight feet long. Well, at the end of the game, we have to park three robots up on this teeter-totter and then make them balance. And so you got to work together to communicate to, you know, a little bit forward, a little bit back, and try to make three robots perfectly balance a teeter-totter and you got to do that in the last 30 seconds some some challenges to be sure uh, um, as you look to overcome them and score the points is this team is it uh, just a brainstorming session is it some 3d modeling what is it that they do to to kind of get their idea of which way they want to move forward yeah so uh one of our mantras is first we drive and so actually last night was our first night, Monday night after school, we learned the game on Saturday. 
We sent our students home with the rule book and with a four page worksheet to go home and every single one of you has got homework. You need to find all these answers. And the answers about rules and scoring and, and limitations and measurement restrictions and weight restrictions and reach restrictions and all of these rules apply. Uh, so our first conversation is, what does our drivetrain look like? You know, we don't care about anything else. We got to know how we're going to drive. How are we going to drive fast down and back? How are we going to have some precision to get on this balance beam? Um, again, this, this, this sideways, uh, not a balance beam, but this sideways teeter-totter, it's slippery plastic too. So you're going to spin out. And of course, the designers at first did a wonderful job. It's a steep angle. And you kind of got to gun it to get up on there, but then you got to hit the brakes really fast and then really slowly move yourself forward and back into position to make it balance. So we spent two hours last night analyzing drivetrains and what our best option is for uh, drivetrain, uh, tire selection, gear ratios. Um, like the direction we determined last night is we have... Uh, we have a two-speed gearbox that's shifted pneumatically with uh, air pressure, so it has a high and a low range. Um, we're opting for a six-wheel drive design uh, with that two-speed gearbox, so our driver, when she has to run the length of the field, she'll shift into high, and then when it's time to do some slow precision manipulation, she'll downshift into low, and so she's just kind of crawling. Um, so again, first we drive until we can drive the things that go on top, we got to drive first. All right. As you look at the, that drive train, are there things from past years, past games uh, that you look at that you think maybe we might be able to reuse some of that uh, again? You bet. Um, so I believe it was 2011, there was a teeter-totter like this. Uh, that one was a little bit different. It was long, and you parked three robots single file on that teeter-totter. Um, you know, 2011. Okay, so 2011 was 12 years ago. Uh, we have students on our team that are 12 years old. So it's not like they remember the game. Our oldest member on our team is 18. Okay, <laughs> they were six. <laughs> Their memory of that game. But we can look at film from 2011 and we can get some knowledge from it. Um, that was a long time ago, 12 years. There's been a lot of evolution in robots. If you look back at a video from 12 years ago, it's almost comical how simple the robots were. And uh, the game has evolved. The game's gotten harder. The technology has come along. Um, yeah, our students now look back and laugh at like just, just clunkers. I mean, <laughs> look at a car from 100 years ago. That's like looking at a robot from 11 years ago. Speaking of the team, and as you mentioned, uh, from 12 to 18, you have that age range on there. Uh, who are some of the ones that you're looking to help uh, be the leaders they experience uh, at, at the heart of the team? Um, so we have, um, we, are, we have a very, very supportive uh, community and robotics is uh, a very strong program for us in our school and an option for our students. Um, pretty much everybody in this school knew that kickoff was coming and knew that the robotics team was going to learn the new game. Um, I, I, I have high school lunch duty I supervise. Well, yesterday I walked around with that traffic cone and would throw it on the floor in front of kids and say, how am I going to pick this up? You know, and you do have good ideas. We put it in the daily announcements, you know, Hey, does anybody know how to pick up a road cone at a full sprint? <laughs> you know, if you've got a great idea, tell a robotics kid. Um, so we do have a core group of students returning. Uh, we also have some new students, just like any team, you know, you've kind of got your starters from last year and then you got some rookies from this year. Um, we have a very diverse team. It's not just a robot, you know, it's, it's more than robots. That's actually a theme in first this year where they say it's more than robots and it always has been. Um, our team, we've got uh, new students who are part of our, um, well, there's a competition always going on called the Impact Award. It used to be called the Chairman's Award, but that's an award that you apply for, and there's essays, and there's questions, and there's an interview, and it's, it's the showcase of your team and what the total package team is. Every time you go to a competition, if there's 64 schools there, this Impact Award is happening at the same time, and the Impact Award goes to the 
the number one team out of those 64 teams that's like the model for others to try to um, follow as a total package team. Um, there's teams out there that all they do is build amazing robots, but they don't do anything else. They don't do any outreach. They don't do any education with their elementary age students. They don't do, uh, they don't do community events. They don't, um, you know, go and present to sponsors or participate in summer, you know, festivals. We do all that. Um, so long story short, we've got veterans in our impact team that are going to be, uh, you know, pursuing this award when we go to our competitions. And then we've got our, our builders that are veterans. We've got our drive team that's veteran. Um, we, did, we did lose some to graduation. We lost two fabulous, uh, fabulous. We lost more than two, but two key positions. Um, our head of design build last year and um, our kind of head programmer from last year both graduated. And those two ladies were phenomenal. Uh, they were you know, four-year letter winners with us. Um, they've got some big shoes to fill as far as like, you know, hey, we just lost the head of our design team. And she was also the head of our pit crew. And so her composure and her experience, you know, we got to look to find that and replace that too. So I guess what I can say is think of a sports team, any high school sports team, you have graduation, you lost those seniors, who's coming up? You know, is there a junior that's going to step in? Is there a sophomore that's going to step in? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about the, the things more than just robots, too. And uh, when I was first introduced into the robotics, uh, yourself and the, the Techno Tigers were one of the first ones I talked to. And telling about some of those things uh, was awesome to hear. Share some of the, the, the outreach or the other. Yeah. Just things that you guys do? Sure. Yeah, no problem. So, um, one of the, you know, they're always looking to, it's more than just robots, more than robots. And first robotics, you know, you're seeing the high school version. And so they actually have, uh, they have what's called F, um, FLL, First Lego League, which is kind of an elementary age Lego based robotics competition. And they have a world's competition and they have, you know, a regional competition, just like our big robots do. They also have another one that's called uh, FTC, which is First Tech Challenge. And a lot of people kind of associate that to a middle school level, even though it does go through uh, 12th grade. But you do see a lot of, you know, it's that middle level. It's almost like think of it as a JV. Uh, and then FRC, and that's the big dogs. That's the big robots. That's the 125 pound robots that's, that look you in the eye. Um, so uh, larger, larger schools, larger communities, they will have all three of those teams happening at the same time. And they will have truly dozens of mentors and you know, scads of students involved. Well, we're gonna graduate 33 kids in our school this year. Um, however, our robotics team has close to 30 students on it. So we're very proud of that. Um, think about a sports program and you got feeder programs, you know, you got Saturday morning basketball with the third graders, you know, you've got uh, middle school tournaments happening all over the place. Just today and this week, some of our key members have been working in our um, working in our fourth grade. Uh, we over the years have introduced a Lego curriculum into our elementary, all of our elementary students get robotics uh, at the Lego level um, in fourth and sixth grade. And all of our students get robotics in eighth grade uh, through uh, another a little bit bigger um, kind of picture a tabletop robot that's maybe 18 inches, uh, 18 inch cube. So anyway, our district has seen the value of robotics and the problem solving and the the competition, but in kind of a learning competition. And the district has uh, over the years embraced that. And so it's all part of our curriculum. Um, and like I say, so today, today we had a handful of veteran members working in the fourth grade. And so, you know, think about that eight-year-old that's watching the starting quarterback on the football field thinking, wow, I want to grow up and be that. Well, our robotics team, we've got eight-year-olds looking at our high school robotics kids thinking, wow, I want to drive that robot someday. So, 
it's that problem solving. It's that it's that opportunity for failure. Um, you go to a robotics competition and you lose a lot, <laughs> and things don't go your way. Um, but you just you know five minutes from now you got to go again, and twenty minutes after that you got to go again, and you got to go again, and you got to go again, and you got to overcome that, and you got to get back out there, and you got to adjust and improve and fix and um, yeah. I, we really value that and, and promote it throughout our whole student body. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it brought up the, the next question there when you talked about the competitions at, at the end and uh, for, for the Techno Tigers this year, uh, very cool. We're gonna be doing some traveling. Yeah, we, uh, in robotics, you can go wherever you want on the planet. Robotics is global, uh, it's worldwide. And if there's a competition in Australia and you want to buy plane tickets, you can sign up and go. And um, we this year, um, we're going to go for a drive. Uh, beginning of March, we're going to drive down to Arkansas and we're going to compete down in Arkansas. We looked at the teams that will be present today. There will be teams from nine different states when we go down to Arkansas to compete. Why are we going to Arkansas? Eh, we've never been there before. So we're going to give it a try. Um, as mentors, we value the opportunities that our kids get to, to travel and interact and meet kids from throughout the nation that think robots are cool and um, that have similar likes and similar tastes. And you know what? You don't know them, but you got a lot in common with them. Um, so we're going to be in Arkansas in the beginning of March. And then toward the end of March, we're going to be in Iowa, competing the Iowa Regional. And we also did a tally. I believe there's going to be teams from seven different states in Iowa. Um, so again, our students are meeting and talking to kids from all over the nation. And, um, and the lessons they learn of, you know, hey, your kid just like me, you know. So uh, we're looking forward to it. And it's a fabulous opportunity. I mean, the uh, you know, everybody's got different travel experiences and our students, I mean, you're a 12, you know, you potentially could be a 12 year old and well, we're gonna take you a thousand miles away and we're gonna compete with, uh, you know, a thousand kids. <laughs> Fantastic opportunity for them. And uh, you touched on it. it, it's possible with the community support you have because it is, it is not easy, it is not, cheap to to do these things that you're able to do yes very yes we are very 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 gracious um so uh, you know robotics is a varsity activity in the state of minnesota and oftentimes one of the biggest vendors or the biggest sponsors you know is your school district you know just like they you know just like they pay to mow the grass on the football field you know there's a cost um and so our school is our largest supporter but let's visualize a band, a marching band going to play at a thing at Disney World. Well, they need to fundraise for that, you know, and so fundraising can look a lot of different ways. Um, us driving to Arkansas and needing to house 30 people for five days, we have some fundraising to do. And, um, and we've been fortunate with, uh, with sponsorship and donors and and robotics is a little bit different. Um, you know, a lot of times you're not selling candy bars or, you know, doing some of those small fundraisers. You don't have a concession stand. Um, we find industry sees the value in what this can do for students and the learning that takes place. And, uh, and we're, just, we're just different enough that uh, it generates a lot of excitement. So we do have some very, very kind ind industry sponsors, you know, and so... Um, as adults, we've done, we do a fair share of grant writing, um, and networking and, and our students are well aware, you know, they're well aware of the work that we're doing to generate the funds, to have these opportunities and, um, yeah, and, and go for a drive. There you go. There you go. Don't forget the snacks for the road trip. Yes. <laughs> Olaf, uh, thank you so much for the time here today to, to talk about the, the Techno Tigers uh, robotics there at Nevis High School. And uh, is there anything else that you want to share with us right now that you want to let people know or, or educate on, anything like that? 
you know, um, in robotics, it's we mentor. And, uh, you know, my big thing is I'm inviting anyone, any age in communities, if you have a passion to work with kids and a knowledge base, and this knowledge base might be in marketing, it might be in business, think of a robotics team as a business and our product is a robot. And any business that manufactures anything is going to have just many, many, many different layers of that onion. And so uh, mentorship, volunteer mentors. I mean, if there's adults out there that think this is neat, find a local team, go meet them and share your knowledge and expertise. Um, because we joke with our kids. Our kids' biggest obstacle is they need smarter mentors. Well, Olaf, we appreciate everything so much. A, a pleasure to chat with you. I certainly uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing how you guys do with the build season and into some of those competitions as well, too. So thank you again. I, I look forward to chatting with you again down the road. Thank you. There you go. Olaf Netterberg, a mentor for the Nevis Techno Tigers team uh, 3102. Join us for our Enbridge Energy Robotics interviews with yourliveevent.com. The PRB Boosters are happy to sponsor coverage of the Tigers. Like them on Facebook for events and fundraisers. The PRB Boosters could use your help. Be part of great events and fundraisers, all built to give back and present more opportunities for the students of Pine River Bacchus schools. For information or to get started, email prbboosterclub1.com. Meetings are the first Monday of every month at 6 p.m. at the school. Good luck, Tigers, from the PRB Boosters. Restock on food, fuel, and baits at locally owned Station 371 on Highway 371 in Pine River. Station 371 has bait and tackle, quality Senex gasoline, off-road diesel, and is the only stop with number one diesel. Make sure to stop by to wash off the sand and salt with their indoor car wash. Open when the temp is at least 26 degrees. They'll hook you up with your fishing and hunting licenses too. Station 371 on Highway 371 in Pine River. Thank you for supporting local business. Welcome back to the Your Live Event Robotics Show presented by Enbridge, where we break down all things in the world of robotics. And special thanks to Olaf of the Techno Tigers for joining us. And coming up next, or still to come, I should say, uh, we still have Chaotic as with Eric and Samantha still to come later on in the program. But let's go ahead and start things off with the mechatronics. We'll start with Kyle and Sydney, and we'll be joined by Jenny Engel uh, here in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and throw it over to Kyle and Sydney. And welcome back again, Mac Robinson here hosting and getting you all set to go. Of course, talking with the mechatronics of Alexandria, of course, uh, team 3313 uh, joining me today. Uh, we have a alumni as well as a current player and that being uh, Kyle, who's currently on the team as well as uh, Sydney, who's a mentor and also an alumni of the mechatronics and, you know, both of you, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate the time. And, you know, to go ahead and just get started, I, I want to hear about a little bit about your backgrounds, I guess, in, in all of this. And Kyle, since you're on the team, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, how long have you been doing this? And, and what really kind of sparked that fire to get you uh, interested in, in robotics? Um, so I think I've been doing this for six years now. I joined the elementary school team the first year. It was a thing back when I was in fifth grade. And then I joined up with the middle school team the first year we started that. And then, yeah, COVID kind of happened in the middle there. And now I, this is my second year on the high school level team with Mechatronics. Okay. All right. And, and what kind of got you interested in, and how did you kind of hear about uh, robotics as a whole? Because I know I wish I would have heard about it when I was back in high school. So, uh, well, my mom kind of she was talking about this robotics thing starting in 4-H and I was interested in the Lego robotics back at the time. And the 4-H thing never panned out, but the school ended up starting a FLL team, which is the elementary level teams here at the schools. And I joined up the first year we ever did that. So, okay. And middle school, we did one game and then COVID happened in seventh and eighth grade during the time when we would have been doing that. So ended up missing out on everything else that middle school had to offer. And then, yeah, built a robot last year in the high school level. 
Okay. And, and then Sydney, what about you, you know, being on, you know, the, being on the other side of it now, now that you're a mentor and, you know, obviously an alumni, how did you kind of get interested in all of this? And, you know, for you, what kind of led to you deciding to become a mentor? Um, so I got really into robotics when I saw the robotics team per do a performance at the steam expo with one of my friends and we both decided, Hey, we're going to join when we get into high school. And we both, we both still did that. And I fell in love with it. I absolutely fell in love with it after my first practice. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is where I feel the most confident. And being graduating and then going into college, and I still went to the tech college here. So I was able to come back and help mentor and help out the team with my expertise, as well as building on to what they're doing and just giving ideas. So it's really cool. Okay. And then, you know, for, for both of you guys, you know, what are some of the goals that you guys kind of have coming into this year? Obviously, you know, both you guys have your levels of experience, but you know, Kyle, for you being on the team and, you know, what are your, what are your goals for this year? And, you know, for you, Sydney, you know, being a mentor, you know, how, how do, how does the goal setting for you kind of differ from, from, uh, from the playing side? Well, so our goals for this year were, is to, we always want to try and improve our robot from la the previous robot. So that's a big goal for us. Um, expanding on what we do with what's now the impact award. It used to be called the chairman's award. So being able to do more with that and expand what we do outside of the actual robot is another thing we try and do every single year. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything. And then for me on the other side, um, getting the knowledge that they put out is important because they'll have a completely different idea and completely different way of looking at things, which I absolutely find fascinating because it will be something that I never thought of and will absolutely work. And it's absolutely amazing seeing how their brains work and how their brains create something absolutely amazing. And I'm glad you brought that up, Sydney, because, you know, for me and getting a chance to see how you guys operated, you know, in, in Alexandria at the uh, NMRC uh, conference uh, championships up there in the open, you know, getting a chance to see how everybody kind of works together. It's always interesting to see, you know, the different voices kind of coming in. And so for, for both of you guys, you know, how do you guys kind of balance and kind of take in all of those new ideas and, you know, do you think that it kind of helps the, the rest of that team dynamic at that point when everybody has their uh, has their ideas listened to and heard at least and, you know, having that difference of opinion kind of mixed in there? Yeah, I've, I've seen it throughout my years. We've all bounced ideas off of each other. We've gotten to the point where we've talked to each other and bounced ideas off of each other so much. We've, we've honestly found our team as a family. We found it's super easy to talk to people and bounce ideas. We know we're not going to be criticized for what we, do, what we think. And we'll take into every idea into consideration. And then we'll like critique it if it does work or if something is like off that we see and we can fix it and we'll use it and we'll try it out. And as someone who's on the team and seen what the team does, uh, so criticism is one of the biggest things we use to our advantage. If someone sees something that could be a possible issue with the rope, our designs, we always try and tweak them so that they can be the best that they can be. We, the criticism part of having someone else look at your design, like I came up with a design this year that had looked had several people look over it to see what possible issues could be, what they see could be a problem with it. And it's come along quite nicely so far. And w with that being said, I know it's still early on. You guys just got the, the new game coming out here, but uh, over the weekend, but at the same time in your, in your previous experience, how is that process? What's that process like for you guys when it comes to getting that new game and then also being able to strategize and build from there? No pun intended. Um, we always like right after we get the game, we'll like, we'll watch the video, we'll watch, we'll see what kickoff is. And then 
we'll sit down and we'll start going, hey, this is what we want to work on. These are the two aspects of the game that we want to focus on for sure. And then if possible, if we have time, we'll work on another one. But just like bouncing ideas off of like, hey, we'll do these two and what could we do to co complete that during the game is like the first step. And then we'll like make dem demonstrations of what we think we could do. And then they come to what we use at competitions, so. Yeah, we also look a ton at the strategy aspect of the game. What's worth what in the game? You don't want to be scoring all of the low points and not be scoring what's worth more. If you were to score only the low points, it's not going to have much of an effect on your alliance score. And that's not going to get you chosen when you're doing the, what's it called? I forget the name. Alliance, alliance, selection. alliance selections, <laughs> yes. Just slipped my mind there. And you want to be chosen for the alliance selections because that's how you can win some of the awards that they offer. All right. Well, Kyle, Sydney, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate the time and best of luck to you guys this year. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again here throughout the season. Thank you. You're very welcome. That is Kyle and Sydney of the Mechatronics of Alexandria, of course, team 3313. Again, uh, special thanks to them for joining me here today. My name is Jared, born and raised in Minnesota, and I'm a project director at Enbridge. Enbridge is more than a pipeline company. It's a company participating in renewable energy projects in Minnesota and abroad, and I'm really proud to be working here. We believe a cleaner energy future is achievable. For over 20 years, we've been early adopters of renewable energy, and we're proudly committed to net zero emissions by 2050. To hear more from Jared, visit Enbridge.com slash Jared. That's J-E-R-R-I-D. All right, and welcome back. Joining me now is the Mechatronics of Alexandria. Again, Team 3313, head coach Jeannie Engel. And uh, Jeannie, thank you so much for joining me. And for for you, I know that we, we just got into, you know, the new game. Everybody's excited about it coming out. You know, for you as a, as a coach, how do you try to uh, lead, some of the, lead some of these kids when it comes to the strategy side of it? And you know, the, the overall build. Cause I almost, I almost feel like this is such an anticipated time for, for these kids. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yeah. Today, um, you know, we have practice that's holding right now and they're, I, I want to say bouncing off the walls, but not literally, um, but just super excited. They're all coming in with some good ideas uh, since we just got the game release. And uh, so be able to having the students, you know, really sit down and kind of do a round table and talk about those ideas, brainstorm what's going to work well, um, what might be a better strategy, depending on if we're going to be more of an offense or a defense bot. Uh, this year, pretty much you're going to be an offense bot. I would say most of them, uh, most teams will at least do something offensively uh, and not just on defense. But, um, and then, and then trying to get them to collaborate, right? So, Everybody has the best idea until they hear somebody else's. Um, and so that's always interesting too. And, and we do the same thing as coaches. Like we reach out to each other and say, Hey, what do you think? Uh, what direction are you headed? Um, because we know then, Hey, you know, we're on the, we're on the right path. We have uh, being that I've been a coach for multiple years. I think this is 10 or 11. Um, I, you lose track after a while, um, but it's a, uh, it's pretty, you know, every game has a different big thing that we're trying to fix. And uh, so it definitely changes from year to year. Um, so just kind of feeling like I have the confidence to say, yeah, kiddos, students, you know what you're doing. Uh, let's just kind of uh, bring it together. And then the biggest thing is to hold, keep that enthusiasm. So week one, it's really easy to be enthusiastic. <laughs> Week two and three, you're, they're kind of like, oh, well, what are we going to do? And then you test something and it doesn't work. And they go, oh, man, that was a terrible idea, you know, or whatever. They kind of decide. And then, um, you know, getting them pumped back up and saying, hey, no, you still have great ideas. And we still can do pretty honestly amazing things with our robots and that they uh, complete. And so, again, just trying to harness that enthusiasm from week one and bring it throughout the season because, uh, the reality is we have six to eight weeks of build, build, and build, and uh, that can that can get a little daunting. So sometimes it's also just putting out that timeline and making sure they know 
um, when the next goal of what we should be getting towards so we're not uh, building at midnight the day before our regional. <laughs> Sounds like my high school time. Uh, I was, but, but at the same time, you know, for you getting a chance to look at, you know, the new game and everything like that. Again, I know it's early on. I know you just got the game a couple of days ago, but you know, for you, how do you go ahead and, you know, look at where could you see some of the strengths for this year versus, you know, some areas where you can be confident in where there might be some areas of struggle there. Yeah, well, and I think of alliances because it's always three robots versus three robots. So the bonus, I think, right off the bat is that um, every robot should be able to score points this year. Um, might not be the biggest points ever, but at least everyone is feeling like they're having some sort of contribution. With that also being said, though, then everybody wants to contribute. And sometimes we can get in each other's way. And that's just a reality. So, um, you know, we try to focus on saying, what do we want to do? And, and let's do it really well so that we can be the robot that, for example, is um, putting cones and cubes on the top level nodes. Um, that would be probably more than likely a strategy that we will try to go for. Um, of course, I don't decide that. My team does, but uh, that's definitely one big strategy out there. Uh, another part is being able to pick up those cones and cubes off the ground and or from the human player um, and be able to successfully bring that back to uh, your side of the, the field, which they're calling the community. So, um, you know, being able to uh, um, cycle from one side of the field to the other quickly is actually not always the easiest thing to do um, because you, you have robots that are playing def defense on you. And even though the field looks really big, having six quite large robots on that field, and then you're trying to, you know, go past each other with no uh, lanes laid down, it can get pretty intense. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing, uh, Jenny, as well, you know, obviously th this isn't your first rodeo when it comes, when it comes to these games. And so for you, how do you kind of look at this year and the, the differences with the game this year compared to previous years and the adjustment that might have uh, been necessary for the kids? Yeah. So, I mean, um, trying to figure out, like, what is our autonomous, um, how much programming is going to go into it. So that's definitely a sub team that um, you need to get prepared for completing whatever autonomous you need to take care of. This year um, seems like you're gonna to have to do something more than just quote unquote drive off the line. Um, and that's kind of the minimum autonomous that a lot of robots do or try to do and, and ours included. That has not been a focus point for our team in the past. And so we just said, hey, we'll get the points for driving off the line in autonomous when we can't control our robot and kind of call that good. Um, this year, I think autonomous is gonna be playing a larger role in uh, getting some of those double points and getting that field cycling to happen faster. Because I think a, a lot of it will kind of realm around that. So um, trying to set up the, the different sub teams that we have for success, um, trying to complete some sort of a grabbing arm instead of um, a climbing mechanism for the people that are building. Um, so kind of wrapping our head around some of those design ideas. Um, is definitely a huge part of our robot building piece. And then there's always the other aspect that doesn't even deal with the robot. Um, Kyle kind of alluded it to it. We talked about the impact award and that's that's a big part of our team. And so we try to make sure we're doing some of those community outreach pieces as well. And then, you know, for you as well, cause I'm always interested, obviously, you know, with the kids, sometimes they, uh, you know, might hear about it from a friend for you. How did you get involved in, in all of this? And you know what kind of got you started in all of this? Yeah, that's a great question. So I used to work up in Tower, Minnesota, really tiny, <laughs> small town. Um, and I worked um, at a like an environmental school, so Vermilion Country School. And so there was six teachers uh, total for the school. The school only had 50 students in seventh through 12th grade total. And so we, we, did, we were not a school to have a basketball team or a football team or any of those bigger teams. Um, but one of the advisors or one of the teachers came and said, hey, my previous school, and this was a brand new school, so it was all, all brand new to everybody for the most part. 
Um, and he said, hey, I used to do robotics. I think I'm going to try and get it up here. And I was like, cool. No idea what that is, but sounds exciting. <laughs> and so um, I got roped in and in a positive way, but uh, asked to help out because we actually had 18 of our 50 students that were interested in robotics, which is a huge um, excitement within the school. So started with that. Um, that advisor had some different life things happen. And so he chose the next year to leave and they said, well, we need somebody to do robotics. And I was like, sure, I saw it once. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, and I think that's really honestly a huge shout out to the first community, um, especially the Northern Minnesota Robotics Conference, the NORC. Uh, we, we really are a community and, and Sydney kind of said earlier, like our team is like a family and a lot of these coaches really become extended family. Um, you know, we give each other Christmas cards and all that kind of stuff because the reality is, is that we lean on each other. I, I don't have any expertise in building a robot. <laughs> I am a seventh and eighth grade science teacher at Discovery Middle School in Alexandria. Um, but I like to organize and I like people <laughs> and I love kids that are passionate. And truthfully, the amount of passion that I have seen both up in Tower, Minnesota and, and now here, it's unbelievable. Um, I didn't grow up with an opportunity to do anything like this. Um, it kind of is an, it's an option for students that don't find a traditional option for a sport. Um, I really do think of us as a sport. We are a team. We are recognized by the Minnesota State High School League as a sport. Um, and we have state just like all the other uh, sport teams out there. I just, uh, I, I guess I got roped in by one advisor and I continued to stay because the passion from the students was phenomenal and the outreach from a lot of uh, other mentors from around the state was fantastic. And they're the reason that I stay. Well, Jenny, thank you so much. I can tell, I can feel the passion through, through the <laughs> computer screen here. So I appreciate it and uh, definitely looking forward to, to covering you guys this year. Thank you so much for the time. Looking forward to having you hop on again here soon. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great day. This year, Shrupp Excavating is celebrating 40 years of digging it right. With this milestone year, Shrupp Excavating wants to thank all of their past, current, and future employees and customers. They appreciate all you've done to help Shrupp Excavating become one of the most trusted companies in the Lakes area. For any excavation project, Shrupp Excavating will have your project done right and on time. Serving Pine River, Bacchus, Pequot Lakes, and all the surrounding communities. Shrupp Excavating LLC, online at shrupexcavating.com. I'm dreaming of a world where thinkers and doers collide. Where technology creates pathways for new opportunities and ideas. I want to ask questions and shape the answers that lead to real and meaningful advancements in this digital era. I'm going to innovate the world someday. Thanks to Mechatronics coach Jenny Engel, as well as Kyle and Sydney for joining me there, uh, taking time out and speaking with me. But let's go ahead and throw things over to our very own Jack Elby, uh, who got a chance to sit down with Eric and Samantha of Team Chaotic, Team 4539, uh, spoke with them about the upcoming game as well as their own history regarding uh, robotics. So, uh, Jack, go ahead, take it away. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name's Jack. I'm here with the chaotic team uh, for the robotics competition, uh, Samantha and Eric. Uh, first off, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to know what? I will absolutely 100% take that. Now, real quick, before we get too into the nitty gritty or the nuts and bolts of everything, um, how did how did you hear of this? Like, like how did what spoke to you about robotics? How did you learn about it? How what what drew you to robotics? We kind of both have the same answer, and it's my daughter. My oldest daughter got me here to see what was going on, and then her sister joined, and then Sam joined because of my other daughter. Yep. So this is one of those programs that once you once you see what's going on and you feel the atmosphere of it. We call it drinking the Kool-Aid. 
and honestly, that is a hundred percent accurate. Um, what was it? I, my first exposure to this, um, to the robotics was actually, uh, about two to three months ago, uh, your live event. And if you haven't seen it yet, go check out the, uh, robotics uh broadcast that we did it is really really fascinating and it it really was just a hundred percent drinking the kool-aid it was just infectious like it was so cool to see where the entire time i'm just sitting there going where was this when i was a kid yep <laughs> but um <clears throat> so is this it you were saying you know your daughter kind of got you into it i mean what what is what is what has kept you going with it i guess for me it's the the passion that the kids show towards this because if the kids weren't having fun and doing what they're doing i wouldn't do it i wouldn't coach if it if it wasn't for the kids i wouldn't do it okay Right. And I think the reason that like I'm still here is because, which sounds bad, but <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm still here is because it's like a community. We all work together. We're all family. And it's just, it's a great community. Once you're here, everybody's best friends. We all get along and you do your job and you succeed. Oh, absolutely. And again, I've noticed something in, in, <clears throat> with the interviews that we've done that word family and community i mean it really really is a, to a point where i i've done <clears throat> I've, I've done sports all the way through junior high to high school and you know things of that nature it's it's something special like I, again I, I i keep on hate going like where was this because it's such an interesting interesting uh thing but now <clears throat> Just real quick, it, mentor, coach, coach, mentor, coach. I'm a, I'm a mentor. I, a mentor. I, I also play the role of drive coach when we're playing on the field. But anywhere off of the field, I'm a mentor. Okay. And Sam, are you? you um... I'm the head of business on where we like do all the awards like chairman's and woody flowers i'm the head of that side oh okay okay wow awesome awesome now real quick and <clears throat> if you could eric it, like it, what is the difference between coaching and, and mentor uh let's see so for me mentoring is more about teaching the kids the proper way to not only do a task, but to act while you're doing it. Um, whether it be you're drilling a hole in a part or you're talking to somebody on an interview, it's, it's the way that you present yourself. I, I teach that. I teach how you present yourself to other people. Okay. Already. And now your, your coaching is just that. It's coaching. This is what you need to do. Go do this next. Go do that next. If you think about we're we're from a wrestling school. Mm -hmm. So wrestling's huge here. When you when the coach tells you to do something on the wrestling mat, you do what the coach tells you to do. That's the difference between coaching and mentoring. Okay. Okay. Now, we, we, and you kind of brought up like it, it, it's it's a bigger it, your school is more of a it's, it's it's more of a wrestling school. Now, how is that when it comes to I, I don't really want to use the term recruitment, but I guess that's the term to kind of use. I mean, are, are the we, students the kids are the they are they really jazzed about it? Hmm? We we use the term recruit. Um, I am not a, I am not a teacher at the school. Okay. I work for one of our sponsors. I work for Team Industries. Oh, okay. So I am a machinist for Team Industries. So for me, I rely on 
Sam and all of the other kids that are here to bring me your friends and just have them come watch. Kind of spread the word and like we put posters up and we do everything we can to show who we are. Okay. What we do. So uh, how is the, is, has, in your opinion, Sam, has it, has it like, has participation or at least the awareness of it got gone up throughout the like past few years or is it that's hard to say i would say it stays at a pretty even keel for uh -huh. students wise i might vary four or five kids a year i might vary six seven kids the next year i might vary i might gain six seven kids the following year Okay. Oh, that's awesome. And now, <clears throat> kind of going going into the physical uh, game this year, um, I actually just watched uh, the video on the game itself. What do you kind of what for both of you? What what do you think of this year's game? <laughs> I personally didn't watch it live, but. Um, it's, it's very interesting, like just having two sets of game pieces and one of them being more like not as durable, like the cube, it's more squishy and there's, it's, I feel like in like the past years, I feel like our robots could have popped that and just like, it's just kind of, it's interesting to see. So for me, the way I, I work in the engineering department, I'm a custom machinist. So for me, I look at it from the aspect of an engineer. How do you do all of these tasks at a level that, I, I don't want to say beats everybody else, but in the same breath, I, it's still a, it's still a, Co-opetition at the end of the day. I, I still have that drive to win. So I look at it from that side of things where what can I do to make the robot pick up the cone and the cube as fast as possible with the least amount of variables and still function and do all the tasks that I have to do. Like keep hold of it. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get it, that's one thing, but now I drive across the field and you were in Alexandria. You, you watched defense being played on people. And this is a 125 pound robot hitting another 125 <laughs> pound robot at, for us, it's 17 feet a second. I mean, we're cruising. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, and you bring up like defense. I don't even know. I'm not 100 percent sure. Like, how how are you going to play defense? Is it just going to be more trying to keep the 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 cube or the cone away from the other team, or is it? So that that's the hard part because now in on this particular field there are places where my robot can't go if you're in them, or I get penalized if you touch. Me. I can go there, but if I'm in there and you come touch me, it's a penalty on me. So you have to, it's, it's really specific defense based on what the other robot can do. So if the robot is really good at picking up the cone and holding the cone, even if you hit them, I, you might not want to play defense on them. Or you might try to just hold them away from getting a cone or... A lot of times you could just simply get in their way because at the end of the day, it's still humans behind the controller. So. Right, right, right. Now, you, you used a term um, a while back, and I, I kind of want to circle back to it, and that's uh, it's, it's co-op attition. Co-op yep. Go a little bit more into that. That that is 
It, it's such an interesting term. Okay, so what it is is it's robotics is a three on three competition where I only have control of my robot. The other two players on my team, I don't have any control over what they do, and I don't have any control over what the opposing team does. So when when you start the day in qualification rounds, you get a match list and you're with team X and team Y. And the next time that you play, you might be against team X and team Y. So when you go and talk strategy for your match, your match, you're, you're basically handing them your, your playbook and saying, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not so good at. Yep. So now when they play you the next time, they know what you're good at and what you're not so good at. So you can, you can kind of pick apart people's strengths and weaknesses. And it's called a cooperation because I don't have control over what my entire team does. My entire alliance of members do. I have to rely on what the person in the next driver station's robot can do and the next one can do. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> kind of already hinting at the game and, and, and the challenges that it's uh, like coming, uh, that's being thrown at you. And, and again, with the, uh, with the competition at Alexandria, like, it, the, the way I've explained it to people, it was, hey, they're basically playing like basketball a wee bit and then they have to kind of climb these these uh these bars and then hang on them and you get points and all this other stuff where there is a shooter a a climbing mechanism and things of that nature you kind of already sam already brought it up where like between a cone and the the cube thing and what how difficult is that going to be to like just for the pure designing that grabbing unit is going to be. So that, that's the, the beauty of FIRST Robotics is it changes every year. The last few years, it's been a shooter game where you take a ball and you shoot a ball. Well, this year, it's what we call a pick and place game. You have to pick it up and place it somewhere. Okay. So when we look at pick and place games, you have to be very accurate at where you place them. So you have to pick them up in the same consistent place is what you're shooting for. The more variables you can take out of it, the, the smoother things are going to go for you when you get to competition. So as far as how do you, how do you engineer to do pick up both the cone and this big squishy pool floaty material cube because that's what exactly what it is it's got the right. little pull a thing out blow it up it looks exactly like a pool floaty it's just nine and three quarters inches is all that it is oh so it's it's physically a it's a balloon thing that's it's, why it's yep. like it's gonna i think there's i think they're gonna get popped that's what i think is gonna happen i think people are gonna try to wow. make their like grab system in a sense where it's not going to, but I think we're going to have some on the field that are going to be popped. When, when I try to explain it, I get the exact face that you just made. <laughs> Everybody looks and goes, huh, how would you do that? I, I can see it in your face. You're thinking okay. about it. How would you do it? So there's, there's something called Robot in Three Days. Um, college kids from around the world build a robot in three days to do the same tasks that we're we get six or seven weeks to do. They're hmm. already out. They're already out on the internet. You can go and look at them. For us, UND is puts uh, puts theirs out right away. Theirs is already out. Uh, it's really great to see those things. So you get ideas from college kids, and you can look at every single one of them and go, hey, I like that idea, or I like that idea. And you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. And... This, the community that we're in, the first community, is all about making other teams better. So if, 
if I if I have an idea and somebody comes and says, hey, what are you guys thinking about doing? One, you have to have the kids to build the stuff that you're doing. And we'll share ideas. I can go down the road and I can tell the coach down the road that, hey, this is kind of our plan. You know, and they're like, oh, hey, great. We're doing this. And hey, if we gotta if we gotta take an idea from what they have going on and it works good for us, in the same breath, if we have an idea and they this community is so great in that that we have last year we had a couple of teams come and our builders help their builders. Uh, in the middle of build season, while we're, we're still trying to build a robot, I've got my builders off building some other helping some other kids build their robot and their kids are helping my builders build our robot that's that's the great thing about what we have going on and you see so many different variations of different ways people can build that robot and different ways they can play the game that it's just it's when you go to co that first competition it's just it you just blown, you're blown away or week oh. one oh i bet I, I, and again just hearing that and being able to be like, yeah, no, 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 I'm going to go help an, a completely different team build a robot that we're going to have to probably work with and then work against and everything else like that. That's so mind blowing when it comes to like a, a pure competition standpoint, but it, like that's such a, like it, it competition really takes a step or a seat back from everything else, which is such a cool thing to see. And that's why we don't call it a competition, why it's called a co opportunity Right. I mean, Absolutely. at the end of the day, it's a competition, but if I can make, if I can make the next generation of machinists and engineers better now, when they get to, when I get old and I need a wheelchair, I'm not gonna have to have a normal everyday wheelchair. I'll have something that'll climb stairs for me. Oh wait, they already have that. <laughs> you know, they have, it's it's the engineers that come out of this program that are building the future. And that's where, that's where we're at. We want to help build that future. Because frankly, none of us are getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when somebody figures that out. But <laughs> You'll be the first to know. <laughs> and to kind of come back to the competitions, like when we're in competition and we're in between matches and somebody's like, hey, do you have like this type of part that we don't have that we can put on a robot because ours broke and we need to bring an extra one, we go and help as much as we can. And that's why it's such a great community when you go is because everybody's willing to help everybody. I, and again, that, and that absolutely floors me in the best way possible. Uh, that's so cool. Again, it, it, just like you brought up, uh, early on with with drinking the Kool-Aid honestly I'm I, I I'm asking for seconds at this point I, I <laughs> this is all I like I love I love everything about the the robotics competition and and, and co-opetition and everything it's it's fantastic now uh Eric you brought up a a really good point because it was something that during Alexander that's what I was thinking I was like okay cool they're doing this they're doing this this is great the the game the competition but thinking like man what is what is what is what is timmy gonna do in five years that's gonna completely change the world of everything yep. like do you think the students like or the do they understand that do they like get like how impressive all of this is and what it's going to be for them in the future? Um, I I think a lot of our kids do because I kind of ram it down their throat. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, you know I I I talk to a lot of other mentors and a lot of other kids from other teams, and a lot of them get the get the idea that the skills they're learning right now are going to change the world eventually. Whether whether they build a robot or they do nothing but business. Because Sam has never touched a robot. I maybe have like once. But like I don't I don't help during build season. Like I don't. And the other thing to add on is maybe my first couple, like maybe my first year or two, I didn't 
realize that we are like the future innovators and we are the like future people that are going to be like building stuff in our world and like thinking about college and like it's just it's crazy thing to think about now not your first year how many years have you been doing this uh this is my fourth year so oh so is this the is this the last year for yeah, you yeah I'm a you're a senior okay so let me let, I'll get back to my other question, but because we're on the senior thing, um, what what does this season mean for you? God, it's insane. The other night, um, we were talking about talking to the uh, like newer kids that were coming in, and I broke down, and it made Eric break down because it's my last year, and you learn so much when you're here. You build friendships you never thought you were gonna build. And it's just, it's insane to see that I'm going to college next year and I'm going to become, I don't even know what. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. And I've thought about architecture and I've thought about all this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's crazy to see that this has brought me to that point. And it's just who I am. And one thing that Eric said before was too, is once you graduate, you come back. You come back and watch the competitions and you might come to watch week like watch the game come out in January and you're still in it. You still watch competitions and you wonder where chaotic is in that year that you graduated from. So it's just it's crazy to think about, but it's insane. I have two daughters that graduated out of out of the school already and one of them should be doing her homework. <laughs> when competitions are going on and usually she'll call me dad did you see this match in this <laughs> regional that's on the other side of the world <laughs> shouldn't you be studying yes you should be but no she's not she has her laptop and her tv on and a cut her phone is watching one event and we don't even have to be in it that's, but we still that's called studying yeah and <laughs> Um, his oldest daughter, she was on the phone with us yesterday for like an hour just talking about like what we're going to do on the business side and like how we're going to evaluate stuff this year. And it's just to see that come back is just amazing. Now, in so business side, what like what what is what is a what is a major like part of the business side for you guys? Um. What do you mean by like major? Like I I I I guess I do want to say like like so what do you do that isn't just like hey I do the business. <laughs> okay, so uh we do a lot of fundraisers and we also do like Steam Day and Robotics Day. We set that all up so we can show the younger kids in elementary school and kind of what we do. And um we this thing we could talk to other teams we help them out where the people will reach out to them and say hey can we give you a hand can you help you with anything because we've helped them in the past um yeah it's just kind of we design our logos for our t-shirts that we like this one <laughs> we designed that logo and we designed a new one this year um just kind of everything that you everything behind the scenes that you would never think that people did we do it <laughs> without a business side your team is not successful it, this is a very expensive sport of the mind to be in. Um, by the time everything is all said and done, we need sponsorships from the team industries of the world. And the Gene Haas Foundation, they put a lot of money into this year's game, especially. Um, or the Vergas Lions Club. For us, it's the Lions, the, your local Lions Club, your local, the local guy that owns the, the wood shop down the road, yeah. the guy that owns the lumber yard, you know, it, it's, it's those people that make us successful. So we need people to reach out to them and talk to them. And the business side does that. They also do all of the awards yep. First is to me, the smallest portion of what first is, is the robot that you saw on the field. And another thing I'm going to add, is um what's it called not chairman's what's it called here? well the First old inspiration. uh so yeah chairman's or yeah um it 
it's a crazy thing. We show what we've all done in the past. We show what we do every year to get out to our community and, and we make a video and we write an essay and we go in front of these judges and we show them everything we have done, everything we got and we present ourselves. And winning that award is just, it's, it's insane. Like we've never, but like, it's just seeing that would be insane. And we do Woody Flowers too as well, which is about one of our mentors and what they have done for us and how they make who like make us who we are and it's just I think it's a lot of fun writing about our team and about our mentors and what we have accomplished and it's just it's great now before uh before I let you go what is what what would the main goal for chaotics this year be the main goal for somebody started a saw in the background here we, we couldn't hear you for oh. just a few seconds oh no no problem no problem so <laughs> wait so so is like are we are we in the in the like workshop right now no we're in a drafting room that's oh, right okay. next to our wood shop Oh, okay. okay. We have a wood shop and a metal shop, and then our robotic, our robotics team, and our robot mm -hmm. is on the other side of that wall. <laughs> oh, okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I, and this could be either a, a joint answer or if you want to answer it separately, that's great. But at the end of the year, what is your biggest goal to accomplish when it comes to chaos or chaotic? Um, Even if it's personal. Let's think. Um, I think our biggest goal is to improve, improve us as a team and who we are. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> improving chaotic and uh, what we stand for, and just I don't know really how else to add. And that. and the community that we're in. Yeah. Whether it be the. For us, the Frazy Vergus community or the community just down the road, mm -hmm. whether I go and help that team and that team, that community be better than what they were when they started the season, that's where we're at. That's our goal by the end of the season is to make everybody's lives that we touch better than before they met us. Yeah, I, I think that is, I think that's beautiful. I think that's a great place to to end it as well. Thank you both so much for uh, talking with me. I feel like I've learned so much. Um, hopefully everybody else feels that way as well. Uh, hopefully we can have you back on here uh, sooner rather than later. But um, We'll get a couple of that. weeks to build under our belt first and then Oh yeah. Pull my name back on the list. <laughs> uh, we'd, we'd love it. We'd love it. Um, but with that being said, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be right back. Well, that's going to go ahead and put a bow on this one for the first edition of the Your Live Event Robotics Show presented by Enbridge. We wanted to go ahead and thank the Mechatronics, uh, Jenny Engel, as well as Kyle and Sydney for joining me. Also want to thank Olaf of the Techno Tigers and Chaotix, Eric and Samantha for joining, uh, for joining us here this week. We want to thank all of you for joining us this week, but this isn't just a one-time thing. Got to make sure you tune in premiering every Saturday at 10 a.m. Make sure you tune in for the latest going on in the world of robotics. Of course, I'm Mac Robinson. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next week.